Hey guys, what's up? Back with another video. Uh, this time we're going to do my review of WWE Survivor Series 2002. As you can see right here, uh, we have DVD cover. We have the DVD artwork right here. We have Triple H on the front, Chris Jericho, Kane, Booker T, Shawn Michaels, and Rob Van Dam. Basically the participants in the Elimination Chamber. There's the back with the big show and some of the matches on the back. So... Let's get on with this, shall we? Also, there's the poster that came with the DVD, so pretty cool stuff right there with RVD doing the splits. I bet a lot of people can do that. <laughs> not me. I'm not one of them. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with this event, shall we? Uh, first match of the night, we had a tag team tables match. We had a, uh, the three-minute warning of uh, Rosie, Jamal, and Rico taking on the Dudleys of Spike Bubber. And Bubba Ray Dudley, and they teamed up with Jeff Hardy in a six-man ma six elimination tag team match, tables match. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, awesome opener. Uh, you know, kicked off the you know kicked off the card pretty cool and uh, pretty chaotic. You know, the tables match and all that stuff, you know, especially with Jeff Hardy. Like you know, Jeff Hardy jumping off things, and uh, there was a, a cool, cool, a lot of cool spots in this match. You know, Jamal uh, doing the dive off the top rope. Flew, uh, uh, to the outside through the table, and Jeff Hardy was amazing for Jeff Hardy's elimination. Uh, Spike's elimination was pretty rough landing, where he basically got slingshotted into the table. Uh, that was pretty cool, and you know, and pretty sick and you know, brutal. Um, and then, of course, uh, just when uh, so they're supposed to leave after they got eliminated, but Rosie and Jamal came back in to help Rico against Bubba Ray Dudley, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, basically, as the as the numbers game was getting the better of Bubba at the end, uh, here comes old Testify Devon Dudley to make the save, and uh, he come out to because he was referring Devon on SmackDown for a little for a little while, so he was away from Bubba. He, him and Bubba had split up at this point, um, and of course, him and D, him and Bubba reunite and put Rico through the table, and he's a you know with a it was a magic story in paradise, you know what I mean? So. Uh, you know, it was it was a fun fun opener. I like that. They're pretty cool stuff. And Devon and Bubba getting back together it was awesome. Good stuff right there. Uh, next match we had Jamie Noble defending the Cruiserweight Championship against Billy Kidman. Um, this was this was the match I was expecting to be the uh, the cool down match, the cool down match as I call it. Where you know where you know like you just seen a great opener. The opening match was great, and I was expecting to th this to be like okay. Time to calm down now, you know, get ready, you know. Like, WWE have done this before, like, you know, like a roller coaster. Like, you have the highs, and then, you, you know, you, you get dropped down to, you know, to bring you down to bring you back up again, you know, that kind of stuff. So I was expecting this to be that, the cool down, the, the, the come down match. But um, it was pretty cool. Uh, I like the match. It was pretty good. It's uh, solid stuff. Uh, you know, Jamie Noble and Billy Kidman really, you know, had a good match. Uh, there was a DDT that I thought was the finish. Um, you know, Jamie Noble hit a DDT off the, off the you know, he, like a like a hanging DDT that, you know, that like Randy Orton does from the middle rope, but Jamie Noble did it from the top rope. And uh, I thought that was going to be out. Like, that was a sick-looking DDT. But uh, Billy Kidman was able to kick out. And, of course, after interference from Nidia, um, backfired. Uh, yeah, Billy Kidman was able to hit that shooting star press and get the win. And, uh, yeah, it was a well-deserved win. A really good match and a well-deserved win for Billy Kidman to, to win the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, next match on the card, we had uh, Trish Stratus defending the Women's Championship against uh, Victoria in a first, I don't know if it was the first, it was the second time, uh, first, second time ever uh, hardcore rules match for the women's title. The, 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 the hardcore rules, a hardcore match for the women, basically. Um, this match was okay, uh, very brutal at times. Um, the, the, the way, the reason why I'm a bit down on it is the finish. Uh, it was very confusing. It looked like uh, something went wrong with the with the mirror. They had a mirror. Uh, Victoria brought a mirror out, like from underneath the ring, and she put it in the corner, and she looked like she was about to use it, but with the cup with them taking bumps and all that stuff, I think Trish might have accidentally broke the glass of uh, the mirror, so they weren't able to use it. 
and Victoria went went towards it, and then she went towards, and then she went to do something else instead because she realised it was broke. So I think you know she used the fire extinguisher, and then she hit a suplex, like a, a plain old suplex, and got the pin. And I'm like, oh, something went a bit weird there. Like it was a bit weird ending, but it was very brutal and it's still an enjoyable match. It's just that that that, that ending was a bit confusing, a bit of a head, head scratcher. But apart from that, pretty cool stuff. Uh, next match we had uh, we had the WWE Championship match. We had Brock Lesnar defending the WWE Championship against the Big Show. Uh, basically, the story coming in into this match that Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar's uh, agent, uh, told kept telling Brock that you can't suplex the Big Show. You know, you physically can't do it. You can't F five the Big Show. You can't beat the Big Show. Basically, he was telling him all this stuff. And uh, Brock was like, oh, yeah, motherfucker, I'm going to prove you wrong, you stupid fat bastard. <laughs> I don't think he said that. That's just my word. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, yeah, Brock went in there, and it was exactly the way it was. Him and Big Show, they had a short match. I think it went like four minutes or something, but it was explosive, and it was exactly what it needed to be. And just as, you know, Brock, he delivered the suplex. You know, that, that was one of the tasks off Brock's list. He, uh, you know, he he F five the Big Show right in front of Paul Heyman, and he was going for that one, two, three. All I need, all he needed to do was get that that last thing, one, two, three. But uh, that damn bastard Paul Heyman didn't want to be proven wrong, turned on Brock Lesnar, uh, and aligned himself with the Big Show, um, and t- you know, basically cost Brock Lesnar the WWE Championship. Wow. Uh, it was it was a, you know it was a short match but it was very explosive. I liked it. Uh, the turn was shocking. I mean you could see it coming coming a mile away now that you know the sign you know, the signs were there that Heyman was going to turn. Like um, before the match, uh, Paul Heyman was talking to Brock and he was like, "I'm going to make sure that I walk out with that my agent walks out as the WWE champion." He didn't say Brock Lesnar. He just said my agent. So. Yeah, you can kind of see it coming up. You kind of see the writing on the wall, but there, you know, it was still awesome. And I think the crowd was ready to cheer Brock Lesnar anyway. So I think this was this was Brock's babyface turn, and I think that this was a good babyface turn. I think it was, you know, it made Brock the sympathetic babyface, which is kind of weird to say Brock Lesnar being a sympathetic babyface. Uh, and you really wanted to see him get revenge on Bro- on the Big Show and Paul Heyman, so uh, and reclaim reclaim that WWE Championship. So that was pretty fun to see. Uh, yeah, so that's yeah, that's a good. Uh, then we had the the next match. We had Edging Edge and Rey Mysterio taking on Los Guerreros, taking on uh, Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit in a el- elimination tag team match for the tag team titles, for the SmackDown tag team titles. That is, um, this was good. You know, this was exactly like you like this was the SmackDown Six, as they called them. You know, as people called them back at then. Uh, this was. You know, you put these six in the ring, any combination, and you're going to have a banger. And this was no different. This was great, awesome stuff. Uh, I loved Angle and Ben was um, kind of not getting along, but kind of getting along. Teamwork, if you that if you that makes any sense. Either way, they were the first team eliminated uh, by Edge and Rey Mysterio, and, uh, and then it came, and then the Guerreros. Had to cheat at the end. Those damn Guerreros had to cheat at the end uh, when Charlo hit Ray in the back with the champ with the tag team title, and then that allowed Eddie to put on a submission and uh, submit Ray Mysterio. So pretty cool stuff. I love the match. Uh, not a bad thing to say about this match, really. No, not a bad thing to say. And then uh, and then just before the main event, we had a segment where Christopher Nowinski came out to basically call the the fans. Uh, stupid, saying that New Yorkers are stupid and all that stuff because they're in Madison Square Garden. Uh, that brought out Matt Hardy. Uh, he he uh, almost looked like he was defending New York, and he says they're not stupid; they're just losers. Boo! You know, and uh, all that stuff. And uh, basically, you know, you know what, you know, what's, you, you might have a feeling what's going to come out next. Uh, basically, two guys in the ring, two heels in the ring, getting along, calling the crowd stupid and losers. Or Lupid, as Matt Hardy called them. Uh, what do you get? You get a big debut, a big pop-up pump. That's what you get. Scott Steiner came out. 
annihilated some fools and uh, sent the crowd home. Well, I would say sent the crowd home happy, but they've got, still got a main event left. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is pretty cool, cool to see Big Papa Pump. Unfortunately, his WWE run was not the best, but uh, this was a good start. You know, him destroying some fools. And, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Which brings us to the main event. We have the Elimination Chamber match. We have Triple H defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Chris Jericho, Kane, Booker T, Rob Van Dam, and Shawn Michaels. Uh, Triple H and RVD started. Uh, then Chris Jericho came out. Then Booker T came out. Then Kane came out. And then Shawn Michaels was the last person to come in. Uh, this match was brutal. Uh, it was awesome. It was awesome brutality, as I call it. As I called it. Uh, as I wrote down in my notes. Um, this was fantastic. I mean, apart from... There's a couple of small inklings that had, like, you know, a bit of head scratch over. What, but, uh, you know, like RVD being eliminated by a drop kick from the top rope from Booker T. Uh, it kind of made... kind of was a bit weak. But uh, the commentators basically pointed out that Rob Van Dam had basically injured himself by doing the frog splash off the top of the cage. So Booker T was kind of weakened already. So... Kind of a you know kind of an all right thing, but uh, still I, I still thought it was a bit weak considering it's RVD. Um, apart from that, the rest of the match was great. Uh, oh yeah, there was another part of the match where I was like, ooh, bit thingy, where RVD did a frog splash off the top of the cage, off the top of the pod, and uh, he his knee accidentally hit Triple H in the throat, and uh, Triple H was hospitalized after this event because of it. Um, apart from that. Uh, that, you know, that was, you know, credit to Triple H for getting through that and, go, you know, continuing the match. Came down to him and Sean at the end, Triple H and Sean. And, uh, you know, the, the miracle is JR. The miracles can, you know, came through. Uh, do you believe in miracles? Because, you know, you're not Mike Bennett either. <laughs> anyway, Shawn Michaels wins this match. And, man, that was awesome. You know, that last, there was last five minutes of him and Triple H. Uh, very intense stuff, you know, especially when, Sean went for the super kick and Triple H counted it into a pedigree and uh, he looked like he was going to get the win but uh, unfortunately it took too long to get to the pin and unlike Booker T at WrestleMania 19, uh, he, he he kicked out. Um, that's, that's, that's very sore for Booker T fans right there. Anyway, yeah, this is pretty cool. I liked it. Uh, what else can I say about it? This is pretty cool. Awesome stuff. I like this elimination chain match, and you had the right winner, Sean and Triple H. Uh, they went in there. Um, I was actually the one thing I will say about this is I've just realized, I've just been looking at K- uh, the Survivor Series uh, DVD uh, through me through me lens. And I'm like, damn, like they, I can't believe what all that stuff they did with Triple H and Kane with the Katie Vick stuff, and uh, Kane and Triple H didn't really interact much in this match. Like that was another thing that was kind of like, what? Like, what? I've just been thinking about it, just like. They didn't interact that much. Like I know Kane beat him in a casket match, like on Raw, like a couple of weeks before this. But uh, yeah. Anyway, um, that's that's it. Uh, I thought the show. Uh, that's it. That's the main event. I thought the show was pretty good. Um, well, pretty good. Awesome. I I love this show. It was pretty good. Um, this may be a generous, but uh, I after after watching the show. Whew, you ready for this? It's going to get a 10 out of 10. Uh, I thought this was a perfect event. Um, you know, I thought this was a perfect event for me. I really enjoyed it. It went by like a blast. It was just a blast to watch. And I had no I had no real major problems with this event. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. And yeah, so 10 out of 10 this. Um, probably, this is that's probably a little bit generous maybe. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But I, that's you know just my opinion. I think it was a 10 out of 10 show. Um, really solid event. I'm glad that Dan Harris suggested this sport to me. Um, yeah, uh, he's been he picked out a he picked out uh, two uh, the last the last two he's picked is he picked this one and he picked uh, SummerSlam 2021. Uh, I got one more from Dan Harris, um, which was Royal Rumble 2005, which I'll get to after you know later later you know, and maybe a couple reviews from now. But yeah, apart from yeah, uh, we'll get we'll, more about that, more about that in another time. That's another that's a smaller story for another time. Anyway, yeah, uh, so ten out of ten event. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Um, absolutely loved it. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed my review, guys. Uh, tell me what you thought in the comments. If you liked, you know, tell me what you thought. If you like, if you if, tell me what if you've watched this event and if you enjoyed it. Uh, anyway, guys, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do you do your thing and have a nice day.